Hi, my name is Danny Labanter, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with the Enterprise team here in Cisco. In this video, we will discuss the DHCP flow within the fabric. A common DHCP flow would look something like the following. And if your DHCP server was located on a different subnet than your endpoints, which is usually the case, you would need to provide an IP helper address in order to unicast the broadcast request to the DHCP server. And that's just due to the nature of the Layer 3 devices that do not forward broadcasts. When discussing the DHCP flow within the fabric, the flow will behave differently due to the use of Anycast gateway and stretched subnets. Anycast is a network addressing and routing method in which a single destination address has multiple routing paths to two or more endpoint destinations. Our endpoint destinations in this example are the SVIs that share the same IP address across the Fabric Edge devices. So in essence, an endpoint may move from one Edge device to another without the need to change its default gateway address. So imagine now we have the same SVI address across multiple Edge devices and an endpoint attempts to onboard the Fabric. The DHCP broadcast request is sent, which at this point the SVI interface will use the IP helper address to unicast the request to the DHCP server, while using the SVI's IP address as the source of the packet. Now this is normal behavior in any DHCP flow, but what happens with the DHCP reply once it reaches the border gateway? How will the border gateway know to which fabric edge device it needs to send the DHCP reply, seeing that they all share the same SVI addresses? Let's have a look at the flow in more detail. First, we have the DHCP request. The DHCP request is then sent from the Fabric Edge device to the border gateway adding option 82, which provides additional DHCP information regarding the client's point of attachment. In this case, it's the RLOC loopback address of 1.1.1.1, as well as the virtual network ID. Notice the source address is the SVI address, which is identical on all three Fabric Edges. The DHCP request is then sent to the DHCP server. The DHCP server will reply, sending back to the border gateway option 82 information untouched. At this stage, it is the border gateway that extracts the RLOC and VN information from option 82. So it now knows to which fabric edge device it needs to send the DHCP reply to. A couple of things to keep in mind. Be sure to check underlay connectivity to the DHCP server. This may sound trivial, but always a first step when troubleshooting. DHCP servers must also support option 82 in order for the DHCP to work. For example, Windows 2008 does not support option 82. An ASR and ISR 1Ks will have the DHCP border relay at command automated by Cisco DNA Center on their interface loopbacks. This completes our video. Be sure to check out our YouTube channels providing additional software-defined access topics as well as Identity Services Engine. Thank you.